Welcome to Slash Detroit for Tuesday, November 19th, 2013. Today's episode is brought to you by members of Michigan State's Izone, who contributed to their team's win, chanting the wrong shot clock times against Columbia. One to shoot, and, and again it runs out. You better tell Rosenberg. As the bars closed Saturday night, the mayor of Highland Park was shot outside of the Key Club in Detroit. Police believe he was not the intended recipient of the bullet that ended up lodged in his leg and was merely a bystander in a brawl that escalated into gunplay. On Monday, he had this to say via Twitter. Don't doubt God's power. He can do all things but fail. It's not too late for a miracle. Keep believing! Now, I'm no ballistics expert and I'm certainly no theologian, but I think it would have been more of a miracle if a bullet that hit his thigh had killed him than if it hadn't. During a press conference at Detroit's Avalon Bakery yesterday, gubernatorial hopeful Mark Schauer said that if elected, he'll fight to raise the state's minimum wage from its current $7.40 an hour to $9.25 over a three-year span. Governor Rick Snyder's office responded by pointing out that Michigan's minimum wage is already higher than the federal government's 725, arguing that there are other ways to boost economy without risking job loss. Remember the armed robbers who were pretending to be cops but turned out to be real cops robbing people? Well, it gets a little more complicated. It all apparently stemmed from one of the officer's 16-year-old daughter being pushed off her bike and robbed of her iPhone. The phone was traced to a location on the east side where two off-duty police officers used their badges and department-issued weapons to confiscate the phone, $300, and a bag of marijuana from three men in their mid-twenties. On Monday, Sergeant David Pomeroy of the DPD and Sergeant Michael Nettoriano of the St. Clair Shores Police Department were arraigned on charges including armed robbery, willful neglect of duty, unlawful imprisonment, failure to uphold the law, larceny of a firearm, felony firearm, felonious assault, and ethnic intimidation. The bicycle bandit was also charged with unarmed robbery and aggravated assault. Great news for Detroit Public Schools! According to the Michigan Department of Education, for the first time in five years, DPS was taken off federal high-risk status. State Superintendent Mike Flanagan said the district and its three emergency managers have produced academic improvements, lower rates of student enrollment loss, and financial, operational, and organizational progress. Chicago developer Bill Holtz wasn't able to purchase the Packard plant, but says he has bought the General Motors Cadillac stamping plant instead. No one else has yet confirmed the sale, so we won't either. In other East Side development news, Peruvian developer Fernando Palazuelo missed his deadline to wire $405,000 to Wayne County for the Packard, but insists that he has the cash and can complete the deal soon. This Friday, the Henry Ford is offering free admission to the museum to commemorate the 50th anniversary of President John F. Kennedy's assassination. The Lincoln Continental that JFK was riding in on that fateful day is one of the museum's most well-known and visited exhibits. After JFK's death, the limo was refurbished for President Johnson with a bulletproof roof and titanium armor. But its historic value and emotional power remains. Slash Detroit has come into a couple of tickets for tomorrow night's performance at the Max Fisher Detroit Symphony Orchestra. It is featuring Jeff Tazik and DSO musicians. It's kind of a ragtime show is our understanding. Starts at 7 o'clock. If you would like to get your hands on these tickets, please post today's episode on Twitter or Facebook and put the hashtag Slash Detroit Ticks.